All right, welcome to the first challenge in the switch statements section. In this challenge, what you're gonna be doing is creating a script for the idea of an item shop. And let's say there's a bunch of different things that you could buy in this shop and maybe each item is associated with an ID. Based on what the user input is, so like one, two, three, or four, it will switch the item ID. So it's checking what, uh, what your input is, it's checking constantly for what that item selected is, and then it will just print out information of whatever that item is, if that makes sense. So in your scene, go ahead and create a script. So I'm gonna right click and create a new script, and I'm just gonna call this like item shop, I-T-E-M-S-H-O-P, no spaces, and hit enter. And then go ahead and open up that script. So for this challenge in your script, you're going to need a variable for an item ID, right? Variable for item ID. And probably you're gonna wanna serialize this so you can see it in the inspector and then we probably don't need start. You're mostly gonna be working with update. So what I'd like you to do in update is check for user input for the keys one, two, three, and four. And based on whether you're pressing one, two, three, or four, the ID should match one, two, three, and four. So four if statements there. And one thing that I should let you know is that you're probably not really gonna need to use a switch statement for user input. Typically for user input, like checking for a key code, typically those are still regular old if statements, even if there's quite a few. But for this next part, you're gonna have a switch statement and it's gonna be switching through the item ID, right? And you'll be having four cases. So let's say case one is gonna print out a message that you've selected a healing potion. Maybe case two is armor. Maybe case three is like a some sort of costume, like a funny hat or something. And lastly, let's say case four is a shield. You're probably also going to want a default case because we can edit this item in the inspector, right? Since it's serialized. So we would be able to type in a number that's not within our switch statement. So there should be something that's handling the invalid selection. Okay, so that's your challenge. Do your best with this. I'm gonna go ahead and give you a second to pause the video here and try your best to complete this program on your own. And if you get stuck, I will walk you through a solution in just a second. Okay, so hopefully you paused the video. Hopefully you figured out the solution on your own. And if not, I'm gonna show you a solution right now. So firstly, we need an item ID and we need it to be serialized. Since we're only dealing with one, two, three, and four, this makes sense for it to be an int. So I'm gonna say private int item ID, and then let's go ahead and serialize this. All right, that's done. Now we just need to check for user input for one, two, three, or four. So I'm just gonna say if input.get key down key code dot alpha one and that's going to set our item id equal to one next up we're going to check for alpha two and this one is going to set the item id to surprise surprise two let's do number three as well if input dot get key down alpha three and that's going to set item id equal to three and the last key press let's go if input dot get key down key code dot alpha four and that's item id equals four okay so now we've checked for all of our user input let's get to our switch statement so we need to open up our switch and we are switching through the item id right and open up our curly brackets so the first case is if it equals one right? So we're going to say case one. And within this, all we're going to do is print out a message debug.log that says like healing potion selected. And lastly, don't forget your break keyword that lets the program know that that case is now finished. Let's move on to case two, which is our armor debug.log armor selected. And don't forget your break statement. Let's go ahead and add case number three. And that's a debug.log funny hat selected. Don't forget your break statement. And the last one, case number four, which is our shield, I think, debug.log, shield selected, and break. We also have to handle our default. So default, and we could just end it with a break. You don't have to put anything in a case if you don't want to, or we could, of course, put a debug 
dot log invalid selection. Cool. Let's go ahead and save our script and test this out. Make sure that your script is attached to a game object. So mine is attached to my cube. All right, on the cube, I actually have to remove the enemy selector script and make sure to put my item shop script on the cube instead. There we go. And now you can see the item ID is available there. So let's hit play. And here, I'm going to put the console to the side so we can see it simultaneously. So because the default value for item ID is zero, it's actually printing out invalid selection. So we know that's working because we only programmed one, two, three, and four. So let me hit one, healing potion selected, two, armor selected, three, funny hat, and four, shield. Oh, and I spelled shield wrong. That's fine. Okay, well, our program is working. Um, awesome. So that's just one example for how to work with switch statements. We have a couple more challenges that we're going to do, and they're getting a little bit more complicated as we go along. Um, so good job in this one, and I will see you in the next challenge.